It is April 14th, about quarter to 11 in the morning. We have a beautiful day here in Northwest Pennsylvania. I am on my way to link up with Steve Shirk of Shirk's Guide Service. Steve is a resident of Northwest Pennsylvania and runs Shirk's Guide Service. And Steve not only does a great job for himself getting on deer and killing deer himself, but also for his clients. And we've been lucky enough over the years to know Steve. I think he was originally like a customer um, and then we were kind of somehow we got hip to what he was doing and um, you know we think highly enough of him to have him in our Black Hats program and he contributes a lot of a lot of content to our blog and uh, it looks like there's gonna be more and more content contribution from Steve on the YouTube channel so this video today is um, just a vlog of me kind of following Steve around through the timber. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of different stuff that we cover and kind of cut out a couple longer version videos on specific topics, but uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm actually not kind, I am excited. Steve's one of the guys who is probably in the top five of most sought out people in or deer hunters in Pennsylvania for guys looking to consume content from Pennsylvania deer hunters so he's uh, he's well known well respected and we're excited to have him kind of in our corner and I'm excited to kind of follow him around today and pick his brain so we will see what we get into we just got here Steve what's going on good man? to see you bud how are you good how about you so what do you say we, uh, we ready to get after it absolutely I'm excited let's do something Yeah, so a lot of times when I'm in these bedding areas, um, people think bedding is just bedding, and actually a buck will uh, get up and feed all throughout the day in his bedding area. And often, if you want to look right here, you can even see like full of droppings. He was in here digging up firm bulbs. And when you, you know, you'll be in some of these thicker areas that are home to buck bedding, you see all this feeding sign and you know it kind of makes you wonder you know what's going on well that's what they're doing is they're not only bedding in here but often most of the daytime feeding is in here as well and that's kind of what we're seeing in here too people you know they look for the sign and then try to find a mature deer and often especially if there's not a lot of other competition in that area maybe or maybe even not a good amount of does they throw down hardly any sign yep. so you can't focus on sign to to try to find buck bedding or even get on bucks in general it's not I, always the case in, i believe especially that too in big woods just on our way back out to the truck from this uh kind of first bedding area first spot that steve showed us and he talked about pretty cool looking area um kind of amongst a couple cuts and in the particular area steve's been on a 150 inch 10 pointer and from the way that he has his camera set up and the way that bed's laid out with an exit trail, I think, I think his days could be numbered this fall. I don't know, Steve. I think I you got so. him. I hope, I hope that's exactly what happens. <laughs> but we all know. It, I know that. We all know, as as deer hunters, Steve and I were just talking about this. The moment you think you got something figured out and set in stone, <laughs> it changes. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Good start to the day. Heck yeah. We are headed to spot number two. This and is uh, an, like another well-known bedding area. I've hunted this for years. Um, it's one of those spots like, if, uh, you know, the, the dominant buck dies, another one will take over. So it's just some of these bedding areas you can count on year after year. Nothing really, uh, just looking at this particular buck bed, uh, kind of the unique thing to me is like there's no, nothing growing in it just because I think it's so well used, you know, over the years that, you know, they're laying here so much, probably not able to have much for grass or anything growing in it, but you can see there's, that looks like some pretty fresh hair here. There's an, there's going to be an exit, an entry trail that we're going to talk on when we come back out. Um, but uh, the unique 
thing I want to talk about th this particular bedding area is the, the deer I was hunting in here, Crazy 12, maybe some of the people that watch this video will even, um, you've probably heard me talking about him if you, if you follow me at all. But it was amazing through the years I hunted him. This is only like a 10 acre cut or something like that. But throughout the summer, he'd kind of bed sporadically and scattered all throughout the cut. And then what I really want to show is how once maybe mid-September arrived, he would shrink up his bedding and daytime activity to literally like three to five acres. He'd just use a tiny little portion. So what I really want people to learn today is the benefit of clustering cameras around these bedding areas because if your cameras aren't in the right particular portion of the bedding area or the cut per se, then you're never going to probably possibly know that there's even a particular buck or maybe even any bucks bedding in there because the activity level is shrinking up so much as we go into early fall that um, it's hard to really just get pictures to get on deer. So I think that's going to be uh, something we're going to learn about in this particular bedding area today. So we just got wrapped up in kind of the bedding area number two, which you can see behind me, just thick, nasty, clear cut. Some pretty good elevation change. Not too drastic, but enough to, uh, I guess enough to influence deer movement on yep. some of these logging roads. And it was pretty cool to see how Steve really pinpointed, even within just a few acres, several different bedding areas. And uh, by running clusters of cameras or several cameras, figured out where to hunt that specific deer. Um, yep. So if you have to watch the other videos, just check that out though. The real reason why I'm actually inside the bedding area versus the outside, I don't get to do that often, but it's what I prefer to do. But the reason why we can do it here is there's a bunch of these quiet access roads. When I talk about quiet access, like this area has been partially logged recently. They came in, uh, you know, with bulldozers and skidders, and it's basically a stick free trail with, with very few leaves that, you know, we can sneak right in about as close as we can possibly do so and get right near those beds. Um, I think the noise, the noise situation, a lot of times around bedding can be can be overlooked. Um, any little bit of noise that that deer hears, it doesn't sound right. I can almost guarantee your hunt's going to be over. So that's about the only time I will go inside the bedroom is if I have quiet access in and out. Both are important, and this is just an ideal setup. Um, uh, not only do I think the deer use these trails, but it's going to be really good access for me to get right tight inside this bedding area. And uh, those, those deer will never know that I'm there. We're in here walking through this kind of hemlock stand. Not on the top, but close, close to the top. And there's uh, and not really a series of benches, but it's just a series of flat spots or steps down through here and you'll notice how open it is right here um, you can kind of see the top up through here and this is kind of the stuff that we're walking through and then there's a series of logging roads down through here on the bottom and this is just all real open and Steve talks about well I'll just let Steve talk about his theory or thoughts on you know deer bedding in more open or bucks bedding in more open spots than what people may think because um, it's something that really helped me figure some things out in the big woods so yep. Steve you want to just mention your yep. thoughts on that yeah I think uh, I mean we know deer use their noses but just as much as they're they're using their eyes so they like to lay in spots where you know they can find like a visual advantage of you know watching all around them or maybe there is at least cover on their backside and they're watching the front but it's rarely like deer are gonna wanna lay somewhere where they're just trying to hide their presence. 
more they want to see what's going on around them and um we there is you know down below us there is a, a clear cut and that could host some bedding too but um if this is where the best visual advantage is going to be and we're kind of up on the hill they're watching the hillside chances are they're probably going to take that visual advantage if that's where it's at so um yeah you don't have to always be inside inside the cover or inside the nastiest areas to get on buck bedding but often too they are close to a area with good cover if he gets bumped he's probably going to run right in there as well so that is a wrap for this trip so um you know hopefully you guys enjoyed the little vlog and you have to watch some of the other videos to really dive in and see uh, you know get the full story on some of these bedding areas and camera tactics and you know stand placement um that steve has going on here so there he is and his dodge right there but uh yeah pretty good trip so we'll head back to the office and get back to normal work week just got back from oklahoma a couple of days and over here for a day and i'm looking forward just to kind of get behind my desk and getting back to a little normal 50 hour 60 hour work week not be on the road going home and seeing my kids that's it that's a wrap on the trip until next time we appreciate you guys everyone watching tuning in um, all the comments the thumbs up all the subs all of it we are very humbled by the support and uh, ultimately you know the feedback the comments the support is what keeps us going on these long road trips so we appreciate you guys tune in next time